The patient in this scene looked up her symptoms on the internet and is quite anxious about the possibility of having a brain tumor. The nurse is able to acknowledge how frightened the patient is and has a very non-judgmental approach. Notice how the nurse's assessment through the health history uncovers other pertinent information that leads to the diagnosis. The nurse in this scene asks both the patient and her sister about staying in a room during the admission process. In this situation, the sister has been listed on the patient's HIPAA form. This nurse should be aware of the patient preferences on the HIPAA form before interviewing a patient in front of others for health history. The sister who accompanies the patient is a valuable asset to the patient for support for both during the visit and in the future. Family members can often supply information that the patient forgets, and in this case, the sister is able to relate that the patient was not oriented to date, time, or day when she first woke in the morning. Hi, I'm here to ask you some questions so we can help you feel better. My name's Emma Kate. I've been working in the emergency department for four years. According to the admission information, you must be Lynn. Yeah, that's me. Nice to meet you, and who do you have with you today, Lynn? This is my sister, Taylor. Hi, Taylor. Lynn, are you comfortable talking with me, with Taylor in the room? I may ask some questions that you may want to keep private. You can change your mind at any time, and Taylor, you are free to leave at any time if you wish. Oh, I do see that you have Taylor on your HIPAA form. Yeah, uh, right now I think Taylor needs to be here. She's the one who suggested that I come. She suggested that you come. Is there a reason why you didn't want to come? I'm afraid I have a brain tumor. Oh. I'm in college and I'm too young for that. I'm scared to find out. Yes, that's a great big concern and I can understand why you're worried. May I ask why you think it's a brain tumor? I looked up symptoms on the internet. I've had headaches and blurred vision for about a month. Okay. And I've lost about 10 pounds without even trying in the last two months. The headaches and blurred vision make it hard to read my assignments or see the board during lectures. I see. What's worse about everything today? Well, when she woke up this morning, uh, she wasn't making any sense. She didn't know the date or where we were. She's always been a straight-A student, so these headaches are really a problem. She wants to go to engineering school, and that's so competitive. Sounds like school is stressful. It's not really difficult, but it is kind of stressful, especially in the last couple of weeks when I can't even see. Sounds like you keep very high standards for yourself. <laughs> now, um, I'm glad that you came in. We're gonna figure out what's going on with your headaches and the vision problems. Now, let me see. Okay, I'm gonna finish with some questions. First question I have is uh, confirming some stuff on your administration things. You are 19 and a student at the university? Yeah, that's true. You and your sister live in an apartment. Yes. That way I can take the bus to the university. And for exercise, you run two miles, three to four days per week? Yeah, that's also true. Thank you for your details. Okay, Lynn. I'm going to have a few more follow-up questions. Have you found that you are more thirsty than usual? Yes. I've gone through almost a gallon of almond milk in a week, plus all the water I drink at night. Last night, I drank four big glasses of water and then was up three times to use the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Have you been feeling tired as well? Yes, I'm tired all the time. Okay. And do you find that you are more hungry even though you're losing weight? Yes. It's sounding like a brain tumor, isn't it? Um, it, I'm not sure about that. Oh. I do see here in your family history that you have history of diabetes in your family. Oh no, I don't want that. You have to watch what you're eating, test your blood. I'm in college, I don't have time for that. Our great uncle had two toes amputated and they said it was due to his diabetes. I'm a runner, I can't have that happen to me. I understand that this is scary and a big concern, but I'm gonna send on your information and your history to the physician. There's gonna be someone up from lab to draw some blood. I'll be back in once the doctor has talked to you. Knock, knock heard that the doctor just talked to you and that you have been diagnosed with diabetes. 
I understand that this is stressful and a big change. Now, I also remember that you were a runner, so I did look up some athletes that are also type 1 diabetics. Let me just get that for you. These athletes play or run with diabetes. There's two columns on this. There's triathletes, swimmers, all that fun stuff. It is going to take a bit of adjustment, but I have no doubt that you can do it. It is also overwhelming. <laughs> I'm here to help. Where do we start? Today, I'm gonna give you some insulin before you go. I actually do have a handout on that as well. We're gonna need to monitor your blood sugar. So here's this handout on insulin as well as the proper ranges for your diabetes. Now, what are some concerns you might have? I don't know. I don't want to have a toe amputation. <laughs> I can understand that. And Taylor, I'm actually really glad you're here because we want to teach with the insulin and testing your blood sugar. We want to have someone else learn as well. Now, I do have another thing for you. You have been scheduled for an appointment tomorrow at the diabetes clinic. You'll meet with a diabetes educator and you can take a class as well that will have you with other diabetics who were recently diagnosed. Now, you guys are gonna be able to get through this. Thank you. Number one, the nurse ends the visit making appointments for follow-up. We assume that both the patient and the sister were taught how to use the insulin pen as well as a, glucom a glucometer. How would the nurse assess the knowledge level of the patient and the sister about a glucometer and the insulin pen? Number two, what other critical elements should the nurse include before discharging a patient who has been newly diagnosed with diabetes? Number three, Family members can provide valuable information to healthcare providers. However, it's up to the provider to validate the information. What experiences with family members help you understand to both value, oh, retake. Number three, family members can provide valuable information to health providers. However, it's up to the provider to validate the information. What experience with family members help you understand both the value and uncertainty when including family members to obtain health information. Number four, what are the reasons that a family member or friend should learn how to check blood sugars and administer insulin?